Hello and welcome in. I believe that the chat is set up. So let us know where you're from. Let us know whether you're an educator, uh, maybe you work in STEM outreach or an after school program, museum, makerspace, library. Tell us where you are and what you're doing. Where are you from? That's the other one. Oh, maybe the chat is not turned on. Hold on. Hold on. I do this. Hmm. Isn't this always the way? Every single time, right? Every time for us too. <laughs> Every single time. You can set it up. Like it's it's even like a template in Zoom. Yeah. 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 We just we just have to uh anyway, you know. And every time goes. they do an update, I feel like all oh, my settings get reset. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um all right. Well. I guess maybe chat is not, I will work on that in a minute when you get started, Nikki. Um, but I will uh, say to everybody, thank you. I, I hope also the Q&A is working, um, the Q&A button. But if not, I will make sure that that gets set up also. Um, you can always drop a Q, uh, question in for Nikki and I'll be monitoring the chat when we turn that on and the Q&A to make sure that that is working. My name is Sarah and I work here at Discover Engineering. I am the marketing manager here and um, we are so excited to share this uh, very cool thing. Uh, some of you were with us last year when or maybe two years ago now Nikki two years ago, uh, when Design Squad shared with us their Maker Act app and uh, how amazing that was. So we were super thrilled um, to find out that they're doing Design Squad Latinx this year, um, launching that. I know you've been working on it for several years, Nikki. Uh, and some of you will have noticed that our Engineers Week and Girl Day resources came out in Spanish this year. Um, and so we're excited to see more Spanish resources get provided for the engineering community. Um, this is more than just engineering resources, though, and I don't want to, like, spoil too much, but no I was a middle yeah. school teacher for a decade, and let me tell you, like, the founds of knowledge, um, just the pedagogy and the whole, like, framework around how this is different is so exciting to me um, as an educator. So I'm going to be excited to just sit and like watch it again. I've seen it already, but I'm excited to watch it again. Um, I'm going to go and, and get this chat turned on uh, and make sure that the Q&A is also working. But I'm going to hand it over to Nikki Siriani, is our wonderful friend from WGBH and uh, is here to talk to us about Design Squad Latinx. So welcome in everybody. And Nikki, I'll let you take it from here. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you all for joining us today. I'm really excited to share um, all about Design Squad Latinx with you. Um, this has been a project in collaboration with GBH Education, which is where I'm from, and Iron USA. Who's been, they're an organization that do international education based out of New York. Um, and this work has been uh, possible thanks to the National Science Foundation. And I can't wait uh, to share all these great resources with you. Um, so before we get started, I thought I'd share a little bit more about GBH, the organization where I'm from. Um, we are Boston's local public media station, and we produce about a third of what you see on PBS and PBS Kids, including a lot of the shows you see her on the left. You might be familiar with Arthur and Molly of Denali and Nova and Masterpiece is another one. Um, and we're just so excited to be able to bring these wonderful programs um, to not just Boston, but also to all across all across the country. Um, and, and together with uh, PBS, my team at GBH Education, we uh, co-founded and co-manage PBS Learning Media, which is our large platform for free educational resources. Often what we'll do is we'll take some of those great programs you see on PBS and contextualize them for the classroom. Other times we develop brand new programs uh, for in-school and out-of-school time programs. And everything that you find on this platform is free and there for you to use. 
uh, today. Uh, so if you visit it, this is what the website looks like. <laughs> Excuse me. There are resources covering all different grade bands and all different content areas. And I really encourage you all to check it out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a bit of a cough today. Uh, allergies are really, really taking a toll on me. Um, so today <clears throat> in the presentation, here's what I'm going to be focusing on. I'm going to do an overview of Design Squad Latinx, reviewing the program goals and how we came about developing this program. Then I'm going to do a deep dive into the materials and we'll have time for questions at the end. So <clears throat> as I'm losing my voice, it's a perfect time to show you a video featuring Design Squad and what it's all about. But first, <clears throat> I just wanted to dig into why Latinx. Um, <clears throat> these statistics here show you just some of the, the reasons why we decided to focus on this population. <clears throat> Latinx communities are really underrepresented in the STEM pipeline. So we wanted to focus on creating a program that specifically targets middle schoolers and gets them really excited about engineering. So here is what we came up with and developed. From a young age, I have always been captivated by insects. Growing up in Peru, I first visited the Amazon rainforest in seventh grade. To me, this was a dream come true. It was there I met an entomologist from North Carolina State University who was doing research on wasps. This entomologist was kind enough to speak with me and show me how he conducted his research. The joy I felt sharing my passion with someone who understood me was overwhelming. It was this experience that solidified my desire to work in STEM and view the world through a scientific lens. I grew up in a family of all boys and always felt that I needed to stand out, claim space for myself, and work really hard to achieve my goals. When I entered college and started taking classes in physics, I found myself surrounded by men, once again. I was one of two female physics majors and the only Latina in my graduating class. But the same drive that I had as a kid inspired me to pursue a career in STEM and to change the status quo. 10 years later, it is still a passion of mine to encourage more Latinas to pursue careers in STEM. Government, industry, researchers, and educators all agree that a strong engineering workforce is an essential part of the future economy in the U.S. and across the globe. Despite the need for more engineers, young people of Latinx origin are disproportionately represented in the STEM pipeline and the field of engineering. So how do we engage more Latinx youth in engineering programming? This is where Design Squad Latinx comes in. Funded by the National Science Foundation, Design Squad Latinx is a bilingual engineering program for kids ages 10 to 13. Developed for and with Latinx communities, Design Squad Latinx has a large collection of free resources for kids and educators, ranging from fun animated videos to comprehensive training materials, all designed to give Latinx youth hands-on, meaningful experiences with engineering. Through all of the program materials, youth are encouraged to draw on their funds of knowledge when tackling engineering challenges. Funds of knowledge are the accumulated knowledge, skills, talents, and abilities that people develop from life experiences with their families, communities, and cultures. Design Squad Latinx helps educators and youth discover this knowledge, value its importance, and apply it to real-world engineering challenges. Design Squad Latinx is designed so that educators can customize the modules to best meet the needs of their program. There are four self-contained modules which can be used in different combinations, making Design Squad Latinx flexible and easy to use. All of the modules contain a fun and engaging video, a wide variety of handouts, and client-centered engineering challenges. Design Squad Latinx was created using a community-based approach. Produced in collaboration with a diverse team of advisors, Design Squad Latinx activities and materials went through many rounds of testing and feedback from community partners, educators, and youth. 
Ready to bring a fun and empowering engineering program to your community and inspire the next generation of engineers? Check out the Design Squad Latinx Collection at pbslearningmedia.org and get your kids excited about engineering. Great. So I want to dig a little bit deeper into funds of knowledge because this really is the underlying basis for our program. Um, <clears throat> again, funds of knowledge are the accumulated knowledge, skills, talents, and abilities that people develop over time from life experiences with their families, communities, and culture. And every single kid brings this to everything that they do, but this knowledge hasn't always been valued or celebrated, uh, especially in relationship to STEM. And with this program, we really wanted to start with the strengths-based approach and tell kids, hey, you already have an amazing set of abilities, a lot of talent and knowledge, and you can apply all of that to the engineering design process. So how did we go about doing that? Well, we developed our conceptual framework, and this applies to Design Squad Latinx, but can also apply to any other kind of STEM program thing that you're doing. And it kind of outlines these three steps. The first step is to discover your funds of knowledge before you can use it. This knowledge has to be uncovered. Um, it's already there. You just have to identify it. Um, and acknowledge it. So in our program, educators really help elicit uh, these, these talents and skills and knowledge by asking a lot of questions and getting kids to kind of think about all of this knowledge that they're already bringing to the table. And the second step, which I think can be one of the most important, is in valuing that knowledge. Um, so it should be recognized and appreciated as an important skill that you're bringing to problems, especially with the engineering design process. And this can look a lot by having educators <clears throat> point out and make connections for kids, um, but also saying, you know, just just giving it uh, value and recognition, like, yes, that is important, um, that thing that you know, or that thing you know how to do. Um, and this can also come from educators modeling it for their students as well, talking about their own funds of knowledge um, and sharing those stories with their kids. And then the last step in our framework is then applying that knowledge. So then saying, Okay, we've we found all this really important stuff that you know how to do. Now let's bring that to these engineering challenges and find different ways we can use it when we solve engineering problems. <clears throat> so part of what we developed, um, in addition to program materials, is a series of professional development for educators. And I wanted to show a clip of one of our series on funds of knowledge, where our main content advisor, Dr. Alex Mejia, um, who specializes in studying funds of knowledge and engineering, um, really digs into where did this term come from, why is it so important, and what does it mean. So I wanted to share with you uh, him just sharing more about the history of this term in this video clip. American Roots. Funds of knowledge is the existing cultural knowledge and skills present in an individual's household, community, and culture. Every person has their own funds of knowledge. But this knowledge is not always recognized and appreciated, especially the knowledge from communities of color. I became interested in the topic of funds of knowledge during my graduate school, where my dissertation advisor invited me to be part of one of her research projects. It was through this experience that I started to make connections between my own personal story and how sometimes my own academic achievement and that of my classmates was perceived to be the result of inadequate home learning experiences, lack of parental support, and even my own culture, which could not be further from the truth. But these views created an acceptance of lowered expectations while serving to further marginalize Latinx youth, like me, from participating in STEM. In contrast, a funds of knowledge approach celebrates the experiences from home and culture that people have and creates openings and opportunities for Latinx youth to engage in STEM activities. In the early 90s, Carlos Vélez Ibáñez and James Greenberg sought to investigate how Latinx families in the Southwest U.S.-Mexico borderlands gain and share knowledge to respond to their economic, environmental and social landscape. This collection of historical and socially accumulated cultural knowledge, skills and practices, as well as the recognition of communities as education resources is what became known as funds of knowledge. An example of funds of knowledge that the researchers described is how the Latinx families adapted to the lack of access to doctors. 
Many of the families described in the research were living in the sparsely populated Southwest, meaning there were very few doctors that were accessible or affordable for families. The situation led families to rely on and develop remedies and first aid procedures based on their ancestral folk medical knowledge. The primary goal of defining funds of knowledge in the research was to emphasize that this wealth of knowledge had a strategic importance for economic well-being and survival for Latinx families. Research into funds of knowledge continued in the 1980s and the 1990s, but this time specifically related to the education of Latinx students. The prevailing narrative at that time about Mexican-American households was that they were inadequate at preparing children for school and that students came into the classroom as empty vessels. Researchers collaborated with and co-designed new narratives with Mexican-American families that detailed the rich source of educational resources found in these communities. A group of researchers at the University of Arizona invited teachers to visit the homes of their own students to focus on practice. That is, what is it that people do and what they say about what they do. The Funds of Knowledge project was meant to help teachers learn about their students and acknowledge their home and communities as spaces in which students gain valuable strengths, resources, and knowledge. The project developed confianza, or trust, among teachers and students and their families. Through lived experiences, households and communities accumulate a variety of complex knowledge. This knowledge can range from knowing about local edible plants for survival to practicing blacksmithing and mechanics for the maintenance of their essential equipment. We know that the more youth can personally identify with an educational topic, the more interest and motivation for learning will exist. A funds of knowledge grounding allows for educators to reflect on existing knowledge and skills that their youth have in order to provide engaging, strengths-based educational experiences. So if you're interested in learning more, we have more videos on this topic and I will, uh, and we will be sharing links uh, to where you can find those and you can dig a little bit deeper if you want to get, get more into the funds of knowledge. Um, <clears throat> so we had that grounding in, in what we wanted our program to be based around, the strengths-based approach, but then we had to actually go about developing the activities, the engineering activities that, that would be a part of this program. And we did this working really closely with a number of partner communities across the U.S., uh, both continental and Puerto Rico. Um, so we started by doing something called asset mapping. Um, instead of doing a needs assessment where we go into communities and seeing where, where the gaps are, we instead wanted to approach it by going to a community and saying, okay, what are the strengths here? Um, which is what the process of asset mapping is called. So in Rhode Island, California, and Puerto Rico, we went into different out-of-school time communities, and we spent time with the youth and had them identify their own assets, skills, knowledge. Um, we we heard about what they were interested in, what they what they liked doing, what they wanted to do more of, and this foundation really became the basis of how we developed and how we uh, chose what directions to go with our engineering challenges. For example. We heard from a lot of youth uh, a common theme of helping, either helping siblings, helping friends. Uh, they felt good helping people. They liked being helpful in their community. So we knew for our engineering challenges, we wanted to really focus on this idea of helping and how can we uh, focus on clients and, and have kids really feel like they're helping people who they might know in their community. Um, other common themes were the environment and animals. A lot of kids felt very passionate about this or loved this. Um, food came up a lot, sports came up a lot, and all of those were different um, elements that we wove into our final materials. And I'll, I'll share about more of that later when I do our deep dive. But <clears throat> that's kind of how we started our foundation of what direction do we wanna go for these activities. Then we did many, many rounds of prototype testing where we came up with an activity idea, got it into the hands of kids, saw how it was going uh, and, and made changes or tweaks. Um, and this this process was really, really important. And I can't stress this enough. Sometimes we're in the office and we like are like, wow, we have a great idea. And as soon as you get into the hands of kids, you're like, wow, that was a terrible idea. And my favorite example is we were really uh, working on developing a hydraulics activity. We thought, 
wow, like a syringe and water moving a ball, like how cool and dynamic kids are going to love this. And then if you can kind of tell the, the photo I have shared here, um, we got water and syringes and tubes into the hands of middle school kids. And it turned into just a giant water fight in the middle of the classroom. We were, and the teachers were like, we hate this activity. <laughs> My classroom's a mess. Please never do this again. And we were like, great. That's probably not a, not a good activity for this program. So that's how we went about developing all of our activities. And we went through many, many rounds of testing and getting feedback and ideas um, from both educators and, and kids as well. After we had what we felt like were a solid number of activities, we did a little pilot study where we <clears throat> tested a portion of our program for six weeks in four different sites to see how is this functioning uh, together. Um, and at that time, and I'll say all of this development was happening um, during the height of the pandemic, which also is why uh, I'm sure you can imagine was very challenging for a lot of different reasons. Um, <clears throat> but we really conceptualized this as a multi-week program where educators, especially out of school time educators would pick this up from start to finish for like six to 10 weeks. And during this pilot study, we really heard from a lot of educators that that model no longer really worked for them. They needed something with more flexibility. Um, they wanted, some programs really wanted just a two, two session challenge. Other ones wanted to do a full program, but we realized that this one long program model was no longer going to work. And we decided to change all of our materials to be a lot more flexible, which again, I'll talk about later. Um, we also, during this pilot study, realized that the engineering side of things were going great. Kids were um, really responding to the engineering challenges. <clears throat> they were learning a lot about engineering. They were more interested in engineering after doing the program. But the whole Latinx side and funds of knowledge side was not coming through as strong as we wanted it to. So, <clears throat> excuse me, after doing that testing, we decided to bring in a cultural advisor. We had a lot of out of school time experts and engineering experts and a funds of knowledge expert, but we specifically brought in a cultural advisor to review all of our materials and tell us how we can amp up the funds of knowledge and amp up this program so that um, Latinx kids could, could more identify with it. <laughs> And then currently we are in the middle of doing our implementation study, which is after that pilot study, we made lots of changes and we now have what we call our final materials. Um, and we are currently testing those materials compared to another engineering program to gauge impact. Um, and that'll be happening through the summer. And by the end of the summer, I'd be happy to share our results with anybody who is interested. And we hope to have those soon. <clears throat> so after all of that testing and prototyping, we're really excited to say we now have our final collection. <clears throat> this is the Design Squad Latinx collection, which you can find on PBS Learning Media, which I talked about earlier. This is what it looks like when you go to the collection page. The entire collection is bilingual and we're really excited about this piece. Um, all the videos, all the handouts, all of the program materials, everything is available entirely in English and in Spanish. And just a note about, about being bilingual, um, Unlike some of our other projects, we were really excited for this one. We were able to uh, hire writers uh, who were fluent in both languages so we could uh, write from both languages uh, from the start. Instead of, I'd say our normal process of working is we'd write everything in English and then have it translated. Um, instead, we were able to conceptualize in both languages, which I just think, um, I think changed the way we were doing things a little bit more. And I'm curious to see the impacts that that has in our research study. Um, we also brought on our translator on as advisors right from the start and discussed the translation more in depthly than I think we have for any other project and really dug into, you know, Latin America is by no means a monolith, right? There's no one universal thing that represents that and language is especially true for that. And so instead of uh, translating the entire program into a very universal, I'm going to say generic, for lack of a better word, Spanish, um, our translator was able to add phrases or little nods to different uh, Latin America countries so that different communities can feel represented and seen in these materials, which I think was really exciting for us as well. Um, so the, what is in this collection, you get a Welcome to Design Squad Latinx. There's a PDF as well as that video that I showed you earlier. There are four flexible modules and by flexible, it means they're each self-contained and you can create a program for whatever needs that you might have. So <clears throat> you can develop a program if your uh, kids are brand new to engineering, 
Uh, we have a pathway we recommend for new to engineering. If your kids are like engineering experts, we have a pathway for that too, if they're ready to dig into more challenging modules. Um, and you can also mix and match them depending on how much time you have. If you only have two one hour blocks, great. If you have 10 one hour blocks, great. There's a lot of different configurations you can do to make the materials as most flexible as possible, we hope for all the different kind of settings where they fit, which is both in school and out of school time, libraries, camps, you name it. I think the materials work well for a lot of different settings. In addition to the kid facing kind of materials and activities, we have a lot of supports for educators as well. <clears throat> we created both a training and a professional development series, and I'll dig into those a little bit more. But in total, the collection is really robust. There are over 22 videos, 32 different handouts, six unique engineering challenges. And again, they are all free and available for you to use tomorrow. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the modules. Um, the first module is called Discover the Design Process. This one is really great if your kids are brand new to engineering or if they might need a little refresher on the design process. And it kind of starts with a, um, we, we call it our version of an escape the room, um, but not as scary. When we said that around kids during testing, they were like, unless you're locking us in a room, do not call it an escape room. We said noted, we will not call it an escape room in the materials, but it's a series of clues and puzzles and kids have to figure out the clues and solve them uh, to put together the steps of the design process. And then after they do that or solve that, um, then they, they get a series of different clients, um, all of whom were inspired by a lot of what kids told us they were interested in. Like there's a, a person who owns a dog shelter. There's a man who runs a food truck and he needs help developing something to keep his food hot. Um, there's a girl who's really passionate about picking up trash um, and she needs help with a device to do that. Um, so again, all those different things we learned from asset mapping, we took those and, and uh, put them into our client cards. So kids get to <clears throat> pick their client and then figure out a way to help them with their problem using engineering. Um, some of the elements in here that our cultural advisor encouraged us to do, um, here you'll see uh, in, in each of our guides, actually, there's something called a time for platicas, which are another word for friendly conversations. And it's a way to connect at the beginning of each session and to get uh, the educator to really elicit and start that funds of knowledge conversation right from the start. Hey, what do you know about this? Do you know anybody who does this job? Um, and other kind of prompts are there for you to help your kids start thinking about their funds of knowledge. And it's a really great opportunity for you to model your own and also value whatever your kids are sharing with you. Um, in this video as well, all of our videos uh, feature Latinx individuals who are working either in engineering or engineering adjacent uh, kind of roles, which is a great way to show kids role models of people who look like them and, and, and different also STEM pathways for careers that they might be interested in. Um, so that's Discover the Design Process. The next module I'll talk about is called Explore Pulleys. Um, so in this module, the first challenge they have is there is a flag celebration that they are helping a community organizer with. So uh, kids are tasked with, first of all, designing their own flag that represents them and their maybe their family or their community, and then building a pulley system to help raise that flag. And there are certain parameters for, for how, how high they have to be able to raise that flag. Then in the next part of this challenge, um, they are again given a series of clients, again, inspired by uh, the asset mapping and things that they told us they were interested in. Um, and they get to choose this time which client they get to help with, with a pulley. All of them need a pulley system. Um, one, my favorite is a cat stuck in a tree who needs a pulley to help get up and down out of that tree. Um, in this module, uh, something else that we wove through a lot of our materials um, our connections to historical and cultural pieces. Um, here we talk about ancient engineering wonders from the Mayan and Aztec people and how they use simple machines to help them build these incredible engineering feats um, and just kind of uh, showing kids that they're part of this like tradition and long history of engineering um, and that that also is something to be celebrated is woven through all of our materials. Um, the, now I just want to show you a clip of uh, this module has what we call our animated explainer about what is a pulley. Um, this is in Spanish, so I wanted you to get a, a sense for what of our Spanish materials are as well. And this way you can just kind of see what our animations kind of look like. These are the ones that you'd be sharing with your with your kids. Una polea es una máquina sencilla que consiste de una rueda con una ranura en la cual cabe una soga. La polea se puede usar para subir cosas, como un almuerzo o cualquier cosa que uno pudiera necesitar. Pero, ¿cómo funcionan las poleas? 
Cuando se le aplica fuerza a un extremo de la soga, la polea cambia el sentido de la fuerza. Esto significa que cuando uno tira de la soga hacia abajo, el otro extremo de la soga es jalado hacia arriba. Si se tiene una sola polea, la cantidad de fuerza que se usa para tirar hacia abajo será igual que la fuerza que jala el objeto hacia arriba. Si se agrega una segunda polea, lo cual se llama un sistema de poleas 2 a 1, estás cambiando la distribución de cómo se aplica la fuerza. Por lo tanto, solo se necesita tirar hacia abajo con la mitad de la fuerza, lo cual facilita subir un objeto pesado. So that, that just gives you a sense of what the anime explainers look like. They're fun. Um, they give just enough content without going too deep to uh, enable kids to be able to really uh, tackle the engineering challenges and the concepts that they might need to have a little primer on to be able to be successful. The next module is called our Create Your Own Engineering Challenge. This one is really great if your uh, kids are pros at the engineering design process. And this one, they really get to have agency over the design process from start to finish. So they think about their community, who they might know, who might have a problem, and then they come up with their brainstorm and design and kind of work their way through the entire design process on their own. Um, and this one, the video really focuses on funds of knowledge in the engineering design process. We have two of our experts uh, talk about how their family and their history and their community and their culture um, and, and how they have applied that to engineering themselves. So really modeling that again for the students so they can make that concrete connection between funds of knowledge and the engineering design process. And then the last module uh, as a part of this collection is showcase your work. And this one is all about taking whatever sort of engineering project you've been working on and really guiding kids through how to uh, share their work with their community. Um, this one obviously makes sense to go at the end of any other one you've done in this module, but if you're doing other engineering projects, uh, I really encourage you to check this one out. Uh, it does not have to be used uh, specifically with other Design Squad Latinx materials. I think it's really great for any sort of showcasing project you might want to do um, in your community. What we do is we have a lot of handouts that really walk kids through what we say, like how to tell your engineering story, how to uh, talk about the beginning, middle of an end and how to share your work and how you worked your way through the engineering design process. This is one of my uh, favorite videos. It is seven suggestions for super successful showcasing. And it give, gives kids a lot of tips on how to, how to do a great per, uh, presentation. And we have a lot of recommendations about you know, you can definitely just do this in your group with other kids to kids, but sharing this with your wider community, bringing in, inviting parents, um, maybe other engineers that are in your community who might be willing to hear their kids can just be a really empowering moment uh, for your kids to really uh, take agency and share all that they know and that they've learned uh, through doing, doing engineering work. So that's the kid facing materials. Now I'll dig a little bit deeper into the training and professional development materials that are available. Um, the first thing is our Design Squad Latinx training, uh, which is available. It's a roughly one hour, maybe less, online self-paced uh, training available on PBS Learning Media. And it really gets into <coughs> how to lead this program specifically. It walks you through all the materials. Um, there are a bunch of different videos on there about uh, tips for leading engineering design activities, how do you support a funds of knowledge approach in your space. Um, and it's an interactive training, so it's it's not dry, I promise. It's really fun and engaging. So that's available for you. Um, also, and it's now the third time I'm talking about it, but is the, the professional development series on funds of knowledge hosted by Alex, our main content advisor. The first one, which you saw a clip of, is all about, you know, why is funds of knowledge important and how was it, why, why was this term even created? The second video is all about why it's so important to value this, uh, especially with Latinx kids. And the third video is giving you a little bit more um, hands-on practicality about how do you then apply this in a STEM setting with kids as well. In addition to those videos, I wanted to point out just some of the support materials that are available. Um, we have some background readings um, if you want to go deeper and further information, some articles if you want to read more about funds of knowledge. There are also reflection questions there for you. Um, as you as you kind of take in all this information. And this is where our results will live once we are publishing our research article. So you can definitely keep an eye on that page if that's of interest for you as well. And then I'm really excited to announce that we are actually in the process of developing 
um, even more resources uh, related to Design Squad Latinx. We are currently putting together an event guide. So this will be taking all these things that we've developed for the program, all the activities, um, and just recontextualizing them for an event. So if you are a type of organization that does like, I'd say STEM festivals or or do community STEM like events uh, or fairs or things like that, or if you do it like uh, parent nights where you have STEM activities, uh, this is exactly what the, this will be designed for. Um, we'll have hands-on events in here. I mean, events, activities in here. That'll be great for an event setting. Um, we're also going to put in some ideas for finding a uh, community engineer and student volunteers, which I think is a great part or a great feature to add to your event. Um, you'd really be surprised at how excited kids get when they actually get to speak to a real engineer. And it's just another great opportunity to have kind of role model mentors available for kids to see. Um, we'll have tips for working with your volunteers. Uh, an event checklist, like how do you put it all together, and a post-event survey uh, that you can give to people who attend to get feedback on your event. So that'll be coming soon and happy to send that along to anybody who's interested in that once we have that created. I think that is all I have for you now. Now I'm happy to take questions. Um, There is my email. If anybody wants to connect after this webinar, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll give you like a couple seconds and maybe I'll drop it in the chat as well. Um, but now I'm going to stop my screen and uh, take some questions. Great. Let me. And I'm going to come back because I'll Hi. help uh, in case anybody has any questions. Um, thank you again so much for sharing this with us. Um, I was a middle school teacher um, for over a decade until Discovery found me and brought me to come and work I guess education adjacent, we, we do educational stuff here. Um, so I know that I would have really appreciated having all of the resources. Um, and I think also just the, the, the funds of knowledge, but the professional leadership, the professional development side, in order to be able to um, have those conversations also with my colleagues. Um, and, you know, there were times where I was the classroom teacher, there were times where I was like the STEM teacher for the school. And so yeah. to be able to um, even have the basics of like, what skills to name and nurture in my students um, would have been so valuable um, and, and is valuable for sure. So I appreciate that. Um, while we're waiting to see if there's any other questions, um, which the chat is open now and the question is open in case anybody has anything, um, I guess one of my uh, questions that I have for you is um, what do you think is um, like the was there anything that came out of, of the work that you did that was like, this is how much time per week um, teachers, particularly like generalist teachers who kind of teach multiple subjects, should spend with their kids? Um, and and then I guess the corollary question would be, um, and I think I know what the answer, I'm, I'm serving you a little bit of a softball because I think everybody here understands the implication, um, but these, these funds of knowledge and the design process, is that applicable to things other than just STEM class time or science class time. Totally. Um, this, uh, we in particular were developing for out of school time spaces. Uh, and that space right now is so, uh, especially for middle school students is like so in demand. Um, so we tried to develop something that would be max impact <laughs> with minimal dosage amount of time, if that makes sense. Um, so we recommend at least one hour a week but what we have heard consistently is that kids get so invested in this that they're always begging for more, more time. And we try to give like, here's what, you know, oh no, we ran out of time. What can we do? We give a lot of support and ideas for what else you can do to help make it um, not just a one and done experience. And how do you make it a wrap around? Um, engineering is such a beautiful thing because it doesn't, it doesn't just happen in one place. I think it can really happen all around us everywhere. Same thing with funds of knowledge. It's not something that's static and just only happens in a classroom or an after school program. Right. So I think that's what we're trying to do with these programs. And especially with our training materials is, is building those pr like practices and ways of thinking, um, both in you and in your students. And hopefully that'll translate to more more than one space and definitely more than one content area. This is by no means is specific to just STEM. We were focusing on STEM in particular because I think historically uh, skills, especially of communities of color and STEM have been undervalued. And that's why we are choosing to focus on that and champion that. But I think 
this can definitely apply to any single content area you're focusing on. Uh, I love that. Um, and hey, shout out to another Sarah uh, with a great question. Um, are there any suggestions or feedback from your experiences about how non-Latinx educators and facilitators can relate better to Latinx students and their families? Yeah, I think what's what's really nice about the funds of knowledge approach or, and the way we broke it down is I think listening, speaking, and valuing your students and families that you work with is so important. And I think just by breaking down this idea that you are the knowledge holder and you are passing it down to your families and students, but instead viewing that as a reciprocal relationship can do a lot to build trust. Um, and trust is such a key a key element in, in all this work that we do, I think, working with kids and families. And I think that's my biggest, my biggest takeaway from even just working on this project myself is just reframing how I think about education and how I can and think of it as more of a circle <laughs> rather than just a linear linear relationship or direction. Yeah, I love that. Um, Jessica and Jennifer are both saying in chat, um, this is a great resource. Jessica works at a university that's going to be hosting um, an event in the summer for Latinx kids from neighboring communities. So uh, I will make sure, Jessica and everybody, that you get all of this. Um, yeah. And to to go back to what you said, you know, if Thea, if some of you guys know Thea Sar, our, exec, our amazing deputy um, executive director here at Discover E. She has been a STEM champion for maybe as long as the field has existed because she started at GBH, um, yeah. right? Uh, it was one of our connections yeah. Yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, she has, I could probably go back and find blog articles since the beginning of blogs that Thea has written that talk about how important it is to, um, you know, make sure that students know that they are engineers, that they do engineer thinking all the time. Um, right. and that, you know, what looks like an engineer or doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, in January, we run a program called chats with change makers, which is where we invite an engineer technician or technologist to come and, um, talk to students. It's hosted by a high school student and our amazing change maker in January. His name is Avery Lane. He's with NISBE, the national society of black engineers. And he said, you know, um, the biggest myth that he finds when he's talking to students is that engineers were not all straight A students. Um, and, I just think, oh, that's so critical because yeah. those of us in the chat who come from education know that grades are not always the best way. Uh, and sometimes that message doesn't get passed along to students um, oh, or so to families. True. So, so true. Right? And we, um, in some of our early testing results, uh, in the beginning of talking to kids about what they think, they are like, oh, well, it's not for me because I'm not good at math immediately. And after doing these kinds of activities where they're, they're, thinking about one, their own funds of knowledge, but also their creativity, their collaboration. They're like, oh yeah, I know someone who has a cat. I can think of something that can help a cat. You know what I mean? Um, it's just so important in changing, I think a lot of the stereotypes that are out there uh, for kids about what an engineer is. You know, I think they're like, oh yeah, they do bridges. <laughs> I'm like, that's it a lot of the time. And I'm like, oh, there's so much more out there in the world of engineering for kids. So, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, um, thank you so much. I'll, I'll give another second in case anybody else is typing things. Fernando Hinojosa, thank you so much for being here. I agree. The, these resources are impactful. When we heard about this program, we knew that we had to make sure that uh, our, our people knew. Um, mm. Heidi says, uh, looking to see how to introduce this starting with an event. Buy-in from parents can hinder student involvement, mm -hmm. which then is more difficult to get the school buy-in. Uh, so do you have any suggestions, Nikki, for um, how to get student buy-in? And Heidi, um, can I also just do a little bit of a follow-up for you, Heidi? Are you coming from like uh, an outreach organization that's trying to work with a school to work with families? Or are you, do you work at the school or district level? Um, oh, you work for an outreach organization. Okay, great. So there you go, Nikki. I set you yeah. up. And I'm sure you have an answer to this as well. But I think um, I think there's a lot of benefits to doing engineering. Uh, we actually, if you look through our materials, you'll find a lot of the language that we use, especially in our training about why this is so important that kids have these opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I think building problem solving skills, creative thinking, self-efficacy, um, 
I, I always say it's a really great way just to empower kids so that they can see themselves as able to make change in their community. Like what a beautiful thing, right? Um, and boosting self-confidence, but you're also going to hit on so many other, I think, traditional like STEM, math, science, measurement skills that are also really important. I think uh, knowing what your parents what might be the angle for them is important. Uh, there's so many benefits to girls participating in programs like this, increasing um, interest in engineering. And listen, engineering's a fantastic job and this country needs more engineers. So growing the next generation of engineers to have successful careers, I, I can't imagine a parent who wouldn't want that. I don't know, Sarah, if you've got more to add on. Um, I would just say, Heidi, if you're looking for um, some concrete things, um, I would go to the teachers and maybe get the teachers to do a little bit of a pre-engagement activity where they're kind of using the funds of knowledge to name and nurture and get the kids to self-identify as engineers um, in some way. Oh, we did the cat activity. And so I know that I'm an engineer because I suggested this or did this. Um, those students then will go home and have those conversations. Um, and then you could send home, you know, a flyer about the event, uh, obviously, whenever you can translate it into whatever languages are available at the school. I had just a ton of um, Syrian uh, and I worked in Vancouver, British Columbia. So I had a lot of Syrian, and a lot of um, different uh, Chinese dialects that, so we sent home things in about four or five different languages at my school when we could. Um, so that's always uh, helpful. Heidi, I hope um, that that is helpful. Feel free to email uh, either Nikki or I, if you're looking for a few more ideas, because oh, I know when you or the the resources. Studies, like, yeah. that there's so much out there about how beneficial. Absolutely. Yeah. So whatever yeah. would be helpful, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Veronica says, could someone who isn't a strong Spanish speaker use these modules? Yes, totally. These are, they're also available completely in English. You do not need to be able to speak Spanish. Um, uh, and again, these are built with maximum flexibility in mind. So if you just want to run your program in English and that's how you normally deliver, great. If you want to do it in Spanish, great. If you uh, want to do both, that's great too. Um what I've heard a lot of teachers do is they do it mostly in English, but maybe they print out some of the handouts or other support materials for their students who are who are either a monolingual or a bilingual or learning another language or things like that. Um, it's really whatever works best for you. But you definitely do not need to speak Spanish to to do this program by any means. Uh, but those resources are there if that's exciting for you. Mm. Um, yeah, Heidi says she's an engineer. Way to go. Way to go, volunteers. You're so critical. I saw somebody else came in and said that they were learning Spanish and that they're an engineer and trying to do um, more outreach. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. You are the backbone uh, and educators really need you now more than ever. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting in there. Um, uh, the school will help with invites, um, but it's up to you to get the Latin, Spanish and Hispanic parents to get excited. Yeah. I mean, doing, um, doing like an engineering night or a STEM night, yeah. uh, at school is really right. critical. And whenever you can combine it with something else that the school is doing. So maybe it's that you're doing it. I know we're coming up on the end of the school year. Maybe there's going to be like an open house or a parent conference night. So kind of taking over the library, um, when you can partner it up with like the scholastic book fair and be doing something in a different room, uh, after school or, um, it, you know, any kind of, uh, event that the school is doing where they're already getting people to come in um, and you can do something else. Uh, those are really good times um, to get in there and, and, you know, co-op and partner and build that community. Um, so yeah, good luck and let us know how it goes and send yeah. pictures, tag us in social media because uh, both Nikki and I would love to see it. Um, so yeah. Thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing anything else, but it's not too late. Uh, you can still get your questions in um Nikki this is so exciting you did you say that you've been working on this since like pre-COVID right yeah we we uh got the grant in 2020 and then we shut down and then we went on hiatus for about a year you know nobody was how are you going to co-design with out of school time programs when nobody's yeah. in out of school time programs um so we shut down for about a year and then you know, as people were coming back and reemerging, we started, but we had to really change how we were planning, you know, because we were envisioning, you know, go into classrooms, get materials, have them collaborate and work together. And th there were a lot of barriers to that. 
in the beginning. So we were really flexible and we adapted just like engineers do, right? We like tested and we redesigned a lot of what we did. Um, and I'm really proud of where we've come out now with the program. I think we've developed something really beautiful um, in a time that was a lot of challenges thrown our way. So that's awesome. And I guess um, I'll get you to do one more thing for me, Nikki. Give a shout out to the other design squad in case uh, people yeah. here aren't familiar with because Design Squad is not just this, like it's a whole it's thing. So many things. If if this is not your jam or you're looking for more, um, we have Design Squad Nation available on PBS Learning Media, which are more like one-off engineering. Um, a little bit more, I would say, uh, how to kind of engineering step by step. If you're really brand new, it might be a great a great place to start. Then Design Squad Global. Uh, we used to partner a club in the U.S. with an international club to do engineering challenges together. We're unfortunately no longer able to do that partnership piece, but the materials are still there. The engineering challenges are still really sound. Um, there's a regular version, and then there's an event in green if you're interested in sustainability, all about how do we um, bring sustainability practices to engineering. That's available. And then as we mentioned earlier, Design Squad Maker, if you're a makerspace, we have a whole program which includes an app, all free, uh, available for you as well to run like 90 minute Design Squad a design squad design thinking workshops. Yeah. And it's really cool, especially yeah. if you have um kind of younger, um younger students. younger. Yeah. If you're if you're oh man, three, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely it is. Okay. Well uh thank you. Thank you everybody for being here. Um I, I threw it uh a little bit of a plug-in for chats, but we are hosting a chats with Changemakers tomorrow. Um, so you can go to our website um, to see where the link is for that and come and join us. Uh, Isabel Marquez, um, who is a systems, an aircraft system engineer um, from North of Grumman will be our change maker tomorrow. So, um, so excellent and topical uh, to the, the community that we're talking to today. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you so much, Nikki. Um, we are going to share this recording, all the resources, links to everything. Uh, you should get that in an email from me next week. Thank you everybody for being here and uh, we will see you at a future webinar. Hey, Carol.